Okay, so for this week of awareness meditation training, we're exploring uh, letting go of effort, really, is what we're doing. Um, and this is kind of in the series of weeks that we've been looking at seeming obstacles in our practice and how we can work with them. And so effort is one of those obstacles that can get in the way, seemingly. <laughs> so uh, we're going to work of letting go of, uh, of effort, which is also essentially letting go of practice in a certain way. We'll talk about what that means. So um, first thing, though, to mention is that as we've explored already, doing in itself movement isn't a problem. Okay, so we can have, you know, this contrast of stillness, emptiness, and then form and movement. And we've already worked with that a bit of saying, okay, well, that's not necessarily a problem. But here specifically, we're talking about effort and effort in practice, especially. So effort, there's a sense that we have to do something in order to recognize awareness and rest in, in awareness. And so we take up this intentional doing in practice when all the doing happens in awareness already. Doing and not doing both happen and uh, occur in awareness. Um, but it's really a habitual tendency to do that. It's really common. I mean, it's kind of why we practice. <laughs> so, you know, uh, there, there's a paradox there. Um, so, you know, it's getting familiar with this tendency to effort in an automatic way. And behind effort, there's explicitly the sense of we're trying to get somewhere. Okay. So this is also part of it. So we're going to look a little bit more closely at what's underneath what we call effort in our practice, how it shows up so we can kind of more subtly recognize effort, how it happens, which will let us more easily let that go and kind of relax around effort. Okay, so we're kind of getting familiar with what is happening unconsciously in practice, this efforting. And so today uh, I'm gonna share a few pieces from uh, a, technically it's a poem from Jingmei, Jingmei Linkba. And this was translated by Kim McLeod and it's in a little book called uh, Trackless Path. It's really wonderful. I, I really love the, the format that Ken, Ken's done this a couple times, taking a really short poem that has a lot of profound teachings in it. And he translating, he's a fantastic translator. And then with each little stanza, he provides a page or two of heartfelt embodied commentary. And it's really, really wonderful. I love these, you know, just sit with, read them. And that in and of itself is practice. So I'm going to share a few things from that that are really relevant to this. So first, let's just acknowledge that paradox of practice, okay? And Jingmi Lingpa has a verse here that says, um, in general, work and effort by themselves create opposition. If you practice, you stir up all sorts of pains and discomforts. If you don't practice, you don't see what you are and wander in confusion. In either case, you lose touch with what is straightforward and natural. So the verse reads a little bit like, to me, damned if you do, damned if you don't. <laughs> so. It's like you practice, you're stirring stuff up. Don't practice, well, then everything's the same, you know, and you don't recognize awareness. So there's, a, there's some acknowledgement of, of the paradox there. So with that, we can ask a few questions. You know, if we're going to practice, what's the most helpful way to practice? How are we currently practicing? Uh, what do we think practice is and what will come from it? I, I think these are great questions to ask just in general, um, but we're asking these kind of questions from the perspective in the context of awareness meditation training. So asking those questions in, in other ways of meditating might be a little different, okay? So now let's talk a little bit more about, in general, how do we practice letting go of effort and some, uh, some verses and commentary here. So this is the verse from Jigmi Lingpa. Uh, he says, be clear that the approach of practice versus not practice relies on an artificial distinction. Without trying to reshape it in any way, rest in what you experience right now. So with everything we're, we're exploring in awareness meditation training, a lot of it is repetition, saying the same thing multiple ways, but in subtly different 
context uh, of, of practice. And so the instruction is right there without trying to reshape it in any way, rest in what you experience right now. So if we're gonna practice with this paradox of practice, that's the instruction. Um, and again, for me, it's noticing how that happens automatically, you know, uh, uh, to, that I wanna reshape my experience automatically, that this just happens like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna reshape it. And for me, it's the automatic and unconscious way in which that happens. Now, um, a little bit of commentary here from Ken. Uh, he says, one possibility is to apply again an instruction from mind training in seven points. It's a teaching. Namely, let even the remedy release naturally. The genius of this and many similar instructions is that as our experience and abilities evolve, we discover how to apply them at deeper levels and in different ways. We are used to thinking of practice as a remedy. It is something we work at and apply when we recognize that we are in the grip of a reactive uh, pattern. In other words, we develop a habit of practice of training attention and of bringing attention to patterns of reaction. Now we let even the habit of practice release itself. So you can see here that, you know, my experience of Sogjin taught by Nankar Norbu was that you start exactly with the, the end goal here. There wasn't a sense of a progressive path, even though that was recognizing knowledge. It's like you only do the practices that you need to do. But it's really common in Tibetan Buddhism to have, you know, the nine jnana model that where you're getting, uh, you start at square one and then you subtly work your way up. And, and this makes a lot of sense. And this is really natural that we practice and we practice and we practice. And eventually we have to let go of the practice. So the practice can be really helpful. And then in the end, in a subtle way, it's even an obstacle in and of itself. So, you know, today when we practice just sitting, uh, the, the social meditation of just noting, just sitting, this is uh, as minimum form as we could possibly do with regards to this. We just, what are we doing? Just sitting. That's it. There's no other, there's no real effort or goal or, or, or purpose there. We're just sitting. So that helps us to, to, to practice letting go of practice. So what's this feel like in practice to do this? Okay, uh, Ken gives a little bit more commentary here. As soon as we feel we are practicing in any way, we stop, take a breath if necessary, and open to what we are experiencing physically, emotionally, cognitively, without trying to reshape it in any way. In the beginning, it is messy and confusing. There's a lot of second guessing. I often end up feeling like a dog chasing its own tail, but that is just the conceptual mind going into overtime. Because I'm not doing anything, the conceptual mind revs up its activity as compensation. Nevertheless, the principle applies. When I recognize that I'm chasing my own tail, I rest in exactly what I'm experiencing in that moment. This one principle seems to apply over and over again. As soon as we recognize that we are doing something or that we are lost, we stop and start again. So there's a sense here of patience, of compassion, that this is inevitably going to happen, right? we'll be sitting here and then we'll know we get caught up in the sense of, I got to reshape my experience. I got to practice. I need to do this in order to have a particular experience. That's why I'm practicing. And um, I love here, you know, that's pointing out whatever I'm experiencing in this moment. That includes, as we've already practiced, we've included, for example, all the six senses. We're not excluding anything from our experience. Okay we're coming back to it and allowing it to be how it is in this moment. And with respect to awareness, that allows us to recognize awareness, to rest in awareness. And as we've said at the beginning of this training, the simple feeling of being, okay? So going uh, a little deeper with this, as we said earlier, why do we practice? We have goals. We're not just practicing randomly, we're practicing for a particular goal an end goal, a purpose. So letting go of effort also means letting go of goals. So, um, and then the next question is, well, how do we know how we're doing with respect to this goals, the goals that we have? Will we evaluate and judge and analyze our practice? We say, am I doing this thing correctly? Am I seeing progress, et cetera? You know, so the, all of this is happening. So letting go of effort also means letting go of this, uh, the goals and the evaluating and the judging and analyzing of our experience. And here again, I would add on the, the unconscious, unconsciously doing that, 
Okay. Because we can note, like as we we did with uh, just noting emotions, we can note just analyzing, right? So we can kind of be with that analyzing mind that arises. Uh, but it is helpful to notice how often that automatically happens. So uh, in looking at this is another verse from Jingmei, uh, Jingmei Lingpa. When you give up your reactive checking, managing and goal seeking, all of it, there is a direct knowing, open and free. Stop changing or altering it, rest right there. And uh, a little commentary here from Ken on this. Mind is not a thing we watch. If we are watching mind, we are already one step removed. Okay, so we, we, we already contrasted mindfulness practice with awareness practice and, and they're both ways of meditating. We, we use them, they're really uh, both meaningful, but they're a little different. Mindfulness, we are watching, you know, what intensely, uh, what's rising here. We're just resting. Not, not trying to watch a thing or resting in the awareness. Watching happens in awareness. Ken says, if we are trying to change what we are experiencing or trying to analyze or track it, we are more than one step removed. Every movement, whether it is checking our experience, managing it, or anticipating it, goal seeking, stirs up the water that is our mind along with the sediment. The empty clarity is there, but we will not know it as long as we keep stirring things up. Sometimes I fall into tracking a thought and how one thought leads to another or analyzing what I'm experiencing. The difference is that now, as soon as I notice what I'm doing, I move from the tracking or the analyzing back into whatever I'm experiencing right now. The same holds for managing my experience, the persistent and pernicious tendency to want things to be just a little different from what they are. In meditation, I find myself tweaking this here, adjusting that there. And before I know it, I'm quite involved in trying to make my experience conform to my expectations. Again, the same principle holds. As soon as I recognize what I'm doing, I return to whatever I'm experiencing. And when my mind becomes very quiet or very clear, uh, when there is a sense of infinite space or profound depth, a thought will pop up. Ah, now I'm getting somewhere. When that happens, there's a rueful smile of recognition and I open to that and rest right there. So I imagine this is something we can all relate to in our practice of noticing uh, these tendencies and tweaking practice. And, and with that really can come a subtle or not so subtle exhaustion with it, you know? Like, oh, I gotta tweak something, I gotta tweak it. Like, you know, it, it's it really is a sense of stirring up, of expending energy, of not letting ourselves just be you know, for a moment. So today in our practice, in social meditation, first we're gonna explore binary noting. And the two notes are effort and no effort which again, we've already talked about, this is not necessarily the same thing as doing or not doing or movement or no movement. There's something a little different effort, you know, and because um, we can do without effort, you know, but here, um, you know, we're, we're, we're tapping into everything that was connected to that, the goal seeking, the, the, the trying to tweak experience, the expectations, the judgments, evaluations, all that in that effort. And we can know when that happens, ah, effort. No effort. No effort. Effort. Okay, well, we just note that. And in doing this, we get more familiar with, with our tendencies, okay? We can both see how uh, much that comes up and also recognize what it is to just simply be, the no effort. Then uh, we're going to practice also just noting, just sitting, where the only note is just sitting spontaneously. That's what you note whenever you feel like noting it. There's no other instructions, but obviously it can be a recognition. Ta da, yeah, just sitting. That's what's happening. Or, you know, a reminder, something that brings us back. Ah, just sitting. That uh, thing that Ken said over and over, just coming back to what I'm experiencing. Just sitting, okay? So, you know, I think that's enough talking about efforting. And so now we can practice in just being. <laughs> 